Funding challenges are designed to give traders the opportunity to prove their trading skills, to show companies that they have put in the work, that they know how to manage risk, and that they know how to turn a profit. And in exchange, companies will back traders with hundreds of thousands of dollars. The rules of these challenges are designed to filter out the gamblers from the traders, from the professional traders. But there are two rules that I see far too often in the industry that are simply unfair to traders that are doing their best to get funded. After passing several FTMO challenges and trading full time for over two years, I have made countless reviews on different companies. And so today we're gonna to be diving into two specific rules that you need to avoid at all costs because they are designed for you to fail. Let's get into it. Prop firms calculate drawdown in one of two ways, either balance-based or equity-based. If you have taken a challenge with FTMO, you already know what balance-based is. When they take the balance of your account at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and they then use that balance to calculate the drawdown that you can use for the next day. In FTMO situation, that drawdown would be 10%. Balance-based drawdown is easy to understand, it's straightforward, and it is the way that things should be. Some companies, however, do not calculate drawdown based on this way, and it is a huge problem. An equity-based drawdown like the one that my Forex funds uses takes into account at 5 p.m. Eastern time your end-of-day balance and any floating profit or loss that you have on that day. So let me give you an example. You are trading a $100,000 account, and on that day, you locked in and closed a trade that was up $5,000. You profited $5,000 on that day, and you also have another trade running at $6,000 of profit. So with these numbers combined, your current floating account balance would be $111,000. You have 5,000 locked in and you have $6,000 worth of profit that is floating. So 5 p.m. Eastern time rolls around and you're relaxing, things are going well and because you're a risk managed trader, you have moved your stop loss to break even. However, unfortunately, as the next day rolls around, the market goes against you and that trade hits your break even level and your trade gets closed. Now to most traders, this wouldn't be a big deal at all. Yeah, it sucks to have hit break even, but you didn't lose a single dollar of your money or a single dollar worth of the firm's money. Well, based on how my Forex funds and other equity-based firms calculate their drawdown, you would have just violated the daily drawdown limit of 5% and you would have blown your entire challenge. You would have failed and you would have lost the money that you spent to purchase the challenge. It's pretty crappy, right? To me, this is the most unfair rule that firms enforce onto their traders. You didn't lose a single dollar of your money. You didn't even lose a single dollar of the firm's capital. You actually showed proper risk management. You moved your stop loss to break even to protect that capital, and yet you breached the daily drawdown rule, and it's just totally unfair. And because this rule doesn't make any sense, it's pretty obvious that the only reason that firms have it in place is because they want traders to fail. It's such an easy rule for traders to breach, especially if you're a swing trader where you are going for large wins and smaller losses. And trading is difficult enough, you don't need to be watching your equity levels constantly when you're in profit. You kind of just want the trade to run and let it do its thing. But even when you're in profit, you still need to make sure that things don't go against you. You might need to have a trailing profit level. It's just, it's a headache. All that to say, if a firm has this rule, I would simply stay away. I've never actually taken a challenge with an equity-based drawdown rule, but I know a ton of traders that have, and yes, they say it is just super annoying. But to me, it's not actually the most frustrating rule of all. There's actually a second rule that way too many prop firms implement that to me is just, it just drives me absolutely crazy. When I first got funded in 2021, it was with FTMO. They were the most well-known company in the space and there really weren't that many competitors. So I didn't really shop around very much. It was pretty obvious that once I wanted to get funded that I was going to go with them. But that was two years ago. It is now 2023 and the prop firm industry is changing very rapidly. 
Fortunately, there are now a lot of options and many of those options are with firms that put the interest of traders first. And that is why I no longer think that FTMO is the best option to go with. To get more specific, ask yourself, why does a company that wants to fund profitable traders force traders during the evaluation phase to make 10% in 30 days or 8% in 30 days or 10% in 35 days? You get the point. Why are firms enforcing a time limit on traders if they actually want them to succeed and if they actually want to fund them. Some of the best and largest hedge funds in the world with the best technology and the brightest minds don't make 10% in 30 days or 35 days. Heck, depending on market conditions, some of these hedge funds won't even make 10% in a single year. And yet firms expect retail traders to make 10% in 30 days. And that's not it. After making 10% in 30 days, they then force traders to make another 5% in 60 days or 65 days. The more you think about it, the more insane it is. And it's totally unrealistic for professional traders that want to remain risk managed. If you're a gambler, no problem, go all in. But if you're a serious professional trader, it just does not make sense. And that's really the key here. The key here is being risk managed. Anybody can take a challenge and risk 5% a trade and eventually pass, but you're not gonna make enough money on a consistent basis to actually quit your job and pursue full-time trading if that's what you want. Again, if you're a gambler, this doesn't apply to you, but for many of you watching, you're a serious trader that wants to remain risk managed, and it's literally almost impossible to pass these challenges while remaining risk managed if there is a time limit. There's literally just no other way around it. If a firm is forcing you to make 10% in 30 days, they just don't want you to pass. I first started trading and tried to get funded with FTMO. This is the rule that I found the most frustrating. This firm is marketing that they want to fund great traders, traders that are profitable. But if they're funding traders that are profitable and are serious, why are they forcing me to over risk to pass in 30 days? It just didn't make sense to me and it never has. Overall, this was all super frustrating and that's why in June of 2022, I started my own prop firm, Lark Funding and both our one stage and two stage evaluation models don't have a time limit. That is the plug for this video, but really I just started it because it was so frustrating to have these time limits and Lark Funding will never, ever, ever have a time limit. In 2023, I think the removal of time limits on traders is one of, if not the best thing that we're going to see in the funding industry. Trading is already stressful and difficult enough. You don't need the added anxiety and stress of needing to pass within 30 days. And so I think it makes a massive difference for traders. I recently started asking myself what I would like to see change the most in the next couple of years in the funding industry. What are the potential changes that we might see? And I didn't have an immediate answer to that. It's obvious now in 2023 that we're starting to see these shifts in terms of time limits and maybe some drawdown uh, limit rule changes. But other than that, I don't exactly know where the industry is going, but it's a very exciting time because it's such a new space that things are moving quite rapidly. So I would actually like to hear from you guys in the comment section, what is it that you would like to see change in the funding industry? And of course, be realistic. Everybody would love to have a 1% profit target with a 50% drawdown limit. But again, the easier the rules are, the more often gamblers are going to be able to weed their way through the system and that's going to put tremendous risk on prop firms it's all about finding that balance between you know filtering out the gamblers and finding the professional traders that actually know what they're doing so leave that comment down below i would love to hear what you guys think is going to happen where the industry is going and what you would like to see thank you for watching play the long game and i will see you in the next one until then peace